Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about genetic diseases and I'm going to give you an overview and some examples for different diseases for the different groups. So what are genetic diseases? There are alterations in genes or chromosomes, or perhaps both, that can lead to disorders. And we can classify them according to the change. So we have chromosome disorders where either an entire chromosome or a segment of a chromosome is altered. We have single gene disorders where only single genes are altered. And those are those that can be autosomal dominant or recessive or X-linked dominant or recessive. If you have any questions to that, you can go back and watch my series on genetics. There I'm going to explain the basics about genetics, DNA, chromosomes and everything you have to know. Genetic diseases can also be multifactorial disorders, which result from a combination of multiple genetic and environmental causes. Examples for that are different birth defects, like for example cleft lip, but also adult disorders like heart diseases, diabetes and others. Also mitochondrial disorders are classified within the genetic diseases. Those are only a few diseases and they're only inherited in the maternal line, but that I will explain later. So let's talk more about the chromosome abnormalities. One of the chromosome abnormalities that you probably have heard of is Down syndrome, also known as trisomy 21. This is because there is an additional copy of the 21st chromosome, making it three copies. Typical for trisomy 21 is a hallmark appearance with a small head, short neck, flat face, a protruding tongue, which seems like it might be too big for the person's oral cavity, and white hands with short fingers. The next, the next disorder is the Edwards syndrome, also known as trisomy 18. People affected by that are usually born very small and have a small head and jaw and usually present with intellectual disability. Plateau syndrome, or also known as trisomy 13. Individuals affected by that also present with intellectual disability, microcephaly, polydactyly, so several fingers on one hand, more than five, different heart defects and structural eye defects. Klinefelter syndrome is also known as 47XXY. This is because males present with two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome, so one additional copy of the X chromosome. Males affected by that present with infertility, less body hair and gynecomastia, so the development of breast in male. Then a Turner syndrome, also known as 45X. This affects females and there usually the second X chromosome is partly or completely missing. Females affected by this syndrome present with a short neck, low set ears, short stature and swollen hand and feet. This syndrome is usually not inherited but rather develops in gamete production or early cell stage of development. Now let's talk about single gene disorders. The first one I want to talk about is Marfan syndrome. Here we have a mutation of the FBN1 gene, which is responsible for the creation of fibrillin, which in turn is part of the connective tissue. So it is a connective tissue disorder. Defects result in abnormal connective tissue, which makes those people present with stretch marks, usually of red color on the back. Hyper flexible joints, long arms, those people are usually very tall and very skinny. And there are different signs like the wrist sign. That is when those individuals put their thumb and their index finger around their wrist and the last part of the index finger overlaps the thumb. Also they usually present with a high palate and often seen in these individuals is lens location and abdominal aort um, aortic aneurysms. If you have any questions to aneurysms, I also made a video about that, so you can click on the banner and watch that video also. The next syndrome I want to talk about is osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease. Over 90% of the cases have a mutation in the COL1A1 or COL1A2 genes. Those are responsible for the synth synthesis of collagen 1, which is absent in those people. They usually present with a blue sclera, short height, 
hearing loss due to fracture of the ossicles in the ear. If you have any questions to the ear, I also made a series about that, so you can click on the banner and watch that video also. And the most significant disorder in osteogenesis imperfecta, as the name already implies, is the frequent fractures of bones, which might also already fracture in the process of being born, so these children often suffer a lot, many of them die very early. The next disorder is achondroplasia I want to talk about. Its primary feature is dwarfism and here there is a mutation in the FGFR3 gene. This is the fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 and this results in an overactivity of the protein which it's coding for and this leads to those individuals presenting with short arms and legs, a big head and an average height in min of 131 centimeters and in women of 123 centimeters. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder. It's caused by a mutation in both copies for the CFTR protein, which is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. And if an individual has one healthy copy and one mutated copy, then they're carriers of this disease and can pass it on to their offspring. In this disease, thin secretions like sweat or productions in the, of mucus in the lung are thicker than they should be. This leads to a coughing up of this mucus in the lung, fatty stool and also poor growth. Now I want to talk about multifactorial diseases like the cleft lip. For cleft lip, there is a genetic predisposition, but also different factors during pregnancy promote the development of cleft lip. Those are if the mother or the soon-to-be mother drinks alcohol during the pregnancy, smokes tobacco, has a poor diet which leads to malnutrition of the embryo and also different medication might promote cleft lip development. Then club foot is another one where there, there are one or both feet rotated inwards and downwards. In 50% of the cases it's one foot, in the other 50% it's both feet. They're usually in the first four years of the development of the child. This has to be corrected by stretching the Achilles tendon and by trying to cast the foot into its right position. It's a long process, but it is usually treatable. And other multifactorial diseases are diabetes, different heart diseases and also schizophrenia. I want to talk at last about the mitochondrial diseases. There are only a few diseases and they're quite rare. I want to talk about two of them, which you might encounter in an exam. Maybe not because they're so rare. And they are only passed on by the mothers. This is important to know because this might be a trick question in a test. Because in fertilization, when the egg cell or the ovum fuses with a sperm cell, then only the genetic information within the head of the sperm cell is given into the egg and the rest part of the head and the tail are falling off and they will not fuse with the ovum and this is the place where the mitochondria are located within the sperm cells so only the, the mitochondria of the mom's ovum will be given further to this their created embryo. One of those diseases is called cairns syrus syndrome. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly just check on the poster how it's written. So this syndrome is the result of a deletion within the mitochondrial DNA. As I said, it's only transmitted from the mother's line and symptoms of this syndrome are ptosis, ophthalmoplegia, cardiac conduction abnormalities, which will be seen on the ECG, and also deafness and muscle weakness. The labor hereditary opnic neuropathy is the last disease I want to talk about. It's a mutation in the MTND1 and MTND4L and MTND6 genes, and it causes the degeneration of retinal ganglion cells, which in turn leads to a loss of the central vision. This was all for this video. I hope it was helpful and clear. If you have any questions, you can post it in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as possible, and I would be very grateful if you would subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.